I've never actually escaped like this. First person escaping with the phone. And what fish should we put in here? Hi everyone, George here. A very exciting video for you today. I'm escaping this tank here with my new friend Will here. Hello. Uh, Will is 17. He's doing aquascaping as part of a school project. Uh, it's equivalent to, for those in the UK that know what A-levels are, it's equivalent to half an A-level. So uh, long story short, uh, Will's mum actually reached out to me about my book. I thought it was a great thing to be involved with, so I donated a signed copy of my book to Will and then one thing led to another and I decided to help Will out uh, by escaping this tank with him. Um, there's some companies that have helped out as well, so Tropica have supported us with plants, Aquarium Gardens have supported us with hardscape and some substrate as well. Oh, CO2 Art, uh, I've supplied the CO2 kit. You bought the, you bought the tank yourself, you bought the lighting. A Waze for the filtration as well, uh, 600 Biomaster, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, but we're going to take you through the whole process. I've not done one of these for a while, so excited for a couple of reasons. One, it's awesome to help out uh, the next generation of aquascapers, like Will. And it's great to uh, create a new aquascape. And actually, it's quite a different scape to what I'm used to. So Will's got um, quite a firm idea of what he wanted. I'll overlay uh, an image of that right now and we're going to try to replicate it but with a little bit of uh, artistic licensing we're not going to completely copy it so uh, let's dive right in okay while will's undoing all of the soil packets we'll just talk about the system in there in a bit of general detail so this is a rimless low iron 90 centimeters long by 45 high by 60 front to back so it's quite an impressive footprint so Three feet by two feet by 18 inches high. What's the total volume, Will? 270 litres. 270 litres. I'll put the US gallon conversion of that now. It's actually a DIY custom built cabinet uh, built by Will and his joiner friend as part of the school project. Quite a big part of his project as well was, uh, was making the cabinet. So a solid wood, solid pine. And what are the doors, Will? They're oak, so solid pine and oak, so really impressive cabinet build. Uh, plants, we'll talk about the plants in more detail later, but mostly Tropica One Two Grow. There's a few pots there as well. There's the Mighty Ray Colander. Some beautiful hardscape, which we'll talk about in more in a minute. But first step is to install the soil. So let's do that now. In, I think, four nine litre bags of Tropica Aquarium soil so far, uh, sloped it to the rear. It's just a very kind of basic uh, start uh, before we put in the rocks and then we can deliberately kind of mound up the soil around the stones to create a more natural look. But it's a real popular technique to deliberately slope the soil up to the back. It enhances the sense of depth, you know, like an optical illusion. So tropical soil, for those that don't know, nutrient rich, helps to feed the plant roots, has a high cation exchange capacity as well. So it will actually reduce the hardness of your water, buffers the pH as well, doesn't need pre-rinsing, ready to go, doesn't need anything underneath. Um, it's just an all-in-one complete substrate system. Been using it for years now, probably in over 100 scapes by now, so proven performer. Okay, next step is to install our rocks. This has been kindly donated by Aquarium Gardens. I believe it's called Green Jade. I'll uh, put a subtitle below now just to confirm that. But it's beautiful. I've never actually used it before. It reminds me a bit like granite, but it has a, I don't know if you can see this iridescent kind of green kind of hue to it, which looks really attractive. Quite characterful um, and just a bit different. You know, we all use mini landscape rock, dragonstone, Frodo stone quite a lot. It is nice to use a different material. So excited to get going with this. So let's install this now and then we'll talk about the actual concept behind the hardscape layout afterwards. Okay so that's the rough hardscape complete. 
you can see the kind of style we've gone for. It's almost like a classical Irigumi, but I don't know if you guys can see what we're trying to aim for. We're going for this pathway that's going to run through here. So I've deliberately kind of scooped out a lot of the soil from here, and then I'm going to fill this with white sand eventually, but we'll do that right at the end of the scaping process because that's the most tidy way to do it, basically. So we've sloped the soil even steeper to the, to the left and to the right, and we, we've got Will actually preparing all of the Tropica plants right now for us. So shout out to Tropica Aquarium Plants for supporting this project and supplying all these lovely Tropica 1-2 grey. So I'm going to open these curtains because it's a beautiful day out here and we can actually see what we're doing a bit better. So Will at the moment is preparing some Micranthemum Monte Carlo and some Rotala HR. What we'll do, we'll split these into smaller portions. Probably we'll get about five to ten individual plugs out of each one of these. We could split them even more, but we're very fortunate to have so many plants to use in escape today. So that's a good lesson as well, you know, a good talking point. Plant really heavily from the outset with fast growing, easy plants if you can. All of the plants in here are relatively easy. I mean, Monte Carlo is probably the most difficult. It's, um, it's, it's a medium category and it will need decent light and CO2 to get a really nice tight carpet. You can potentially get a full carpet without CO2, um, but I always suggest if you can use CO2 injection, do so, because you're just guaranteed more success with your aquarium plants that way. Other plants we've got, um, Eleocaris uh, Acicularis mini. This is going to be mixed up with the Monte Carlo to get a really nice um, textured carpet effect. So uh, Will and I did debate whether to go kind of solid carpet, you know, a solid uh, lawn of Eleocaris but, and then a solid lawn of the Monte Carlo, but we figured we want a more naturalistic approach, so that's why we're going to mix them. We do have some uh, Cryptocorony Wendity eye green as well. Uh, not a popular choice for Iwagumi layouts, but I thought this would be really nice planted around the stones. It doesn't get too tall. And we also have some Hygrophila pinnatifida, which we're going to use as an epiphyte plant. So that's going to be exciting. And then we've got some uh, Rotala rotundifolia, uh, the regular kind of Rotala. And then we're going to kind of mix that up as well with the HR to get, again, get this kind of nice blended texture. Will, is this the first time you've ever prepared plants, Will? Yeah. You're doing a great job, mate. I'm really proud of you. So Will is um, planning on taking aquascaping more seriously. I am going to kind of uh, mentor him a little bit. He's going to create uh, an Instagram account and he's going to do some uh, updates of this scape, hopefully for us all to enjoy. So uh, I'll leave a link to that when appropriate. But yeah, I'm really pleased with this. I think I haven't actually done, it's almost like a, I wouldn't say it's a diorama scape, um, but it does have an element of that with the kind of pathway going up the center. Um, it does remind me a little bit of a Brazilian style scape as well, especially um, what I'm intending for Will to do is kind of maintain the stem plants appropriately to get this kind of distinctive V shape, um, which will enhance this kind of sense of depth that we're going for, uh, which complements the pathway and obviously the fine textures of the carpeting plants etc. So we'll do a time lapse of preparing all the rest of the plants and then we'll start planting. We're just going to add a layer of the powder type aquarium soil from Tropica. This is much easier to plant into with really delicate root structure plants like Micanthum and Monte Carlo. So time to plant. Let's just go through the species very quickly again. We'll plant, we'll start the planting with the Cryptocoryne Wendity eye green. That's going to go around the base of some of the stones to act as a transitional plant. The risk is if we have like a completely flat carpet and then it goes straight into a rock, it can look a little bit kind of jarring, a little bit too much of a contrast. So I like to soften those transitions with other plants. So there'll be a mixture of the Eleocaris mini and the Monte Carlo. Leading up to the uh, Cryptocorony Wendity eye green around the rocks, we use some Hygrophila pinnatifida as epiphytes in between the stones and then finally in the background we have a mixture of Rotala rotunda folia and Rotala vietnam hetra which we're, again we're going to blend in 
uh, to create the most naturalistic pattern that we can. It's important to stop these plants from drying out, so we just give them a bit of a spray intermittently. The one to grow, um, many of you will have heard of one to grow from Tropica, tissue cultures grown in laboratory conditions means they're guaranteed to be free from algae, pests, uh, snails and pesticides. Low, really good amount of uh, plant for your money as well and they've grown in a liquid, most of them are grown in a liquid media which means they're already adapted to be growing underwater so they'll start growing right away in your aquarium where Alternatively, if you get a potted, this is the potted variety of Rotala the folia. Um, this has been grown out of water in its emerged state, so it will have to go through a transitional phase where it adapts to grow underwater. Now, interesting fun fact for you, the reason it's called Rotala rotundifolia is because those leaves are round, rotundifolia. What happens is, when it, after it adapts to its underwater state, those round leaves will become a lot more needle-like and it transforms quite considerably. The colour will also transform, so the, um, in the intense lighting, which we potentially have here with the twin star autofocus, come on, there we go, with the twin star uh, 900S uh, version 3, 84 watts, should have enough intensity to get some red growth on the Rotala rotundifolia, and definitely on the HRA, which is more predisposed to turn a red colour. So um, Will and myself will plant all of these now and we'll do a time lapse. Okay, we're nearly at the final stages of planting. Will has taken control of the left hand side. Done a great job, if I may say so. This is his first time ever planting a tank, isn't it? And I think I have to say, he's probably done a better job than me. So this is the scape from above. You can see the kind of twisty path we're going for. Stems at the back, crypts in the mid-ground, mixture of the Eleocaris mini and the Monte Carlo in the foreground. Final plants will be the Hygrophila pinnatifida, used as an epiphyte. So this is literally a Potsworth here, and we can, all we have to do is literally wedge, if you can see that, you can literally just wedge that in the crack, and that's going to self-attach. and then that will kind of grow and creep and Will will trim it, keep trimming it and kind of train its growth and look really, really attractive. So we've got some more gaps down here, we've got some gaps around here, and just basically all the gaps in between the stones we can now wedge the Hygrophila into. Now if you are on a tighter budget, you know, we're very grateful to have support from Tropica, so we're using, you know, more plants than you may need to. You could separate these into more individual portions if you wanted to for more economical coverage um, but you know if you can use more plants it is much more beneficial and you'll get a much ch better chance of success at the start and less chance of algae growth as well. So it can be grown as a stem plant as well you can bury it in the soil so this here that will grow both as an epiphyte and maybe as a stem the roots will kind of maybe attack Get, they grow into the soil there so that'll be interesting to see how that one grows and we have one last portion here and i think that would be good and there's a bit of a gap here in between these two stones you see that gap there so let's just poke that in there now it will turn, the leaves will turn a reddy burgundy colour under good lighting, so hopefully the twin star will be powerful enough. Let's just, here's the twin star here. This is the version three, and you can see the array of the RGB and white LEDs there. So slightly more powerful, slightly more colour LEDs as well, so you get more of a, uh, I think the colour rendition is slightly better than the version two, and I think it's slightly more powerful as well. So now we can do our sand pathway and our graded gravels. Okay, we're fully planted, really, really happy with this. Massively out of my comfort zone, but that's the only way you can really grow in aquascaping. So actually really grateful to Will for forcing me to do a Brazilian style aquascape. <laughs> so yeah, all planted. We did a bit of detail work with the pathway there. Um, 
we added the, the sand right at the end of the process. This just keeps things neater. It's not 100% neat down here, but Will can, Will can do that in the long term if he wants to. So hopefully these rocks are gonna act as a barrier to prevent the soil from migrating over to the sand. It, it can happen, it, it does happen quite a lot, especially with the Mano shrimp as they're kind of turning over the soil grains, etc. It's something that you live with and in every maintenance session, you can simply siphon off the top layer of dirty sand and then replace it with some fresh new sand, which doesn't cost very much at all. So it's quite a cost-effective way of maintaining your sand pathway. Uh, if Will wanted to, he could evolve the pathway. He could, he could mess around with these fragments. He could add some more fragments as well. All I did here was get a, a larger piece of this red, uh, the green jade, hit it really hard with a hammer, obviously wearing safety glasses, and then these chippings that we've just used to create uh, that extra detailing. So next step, we're going to fill with the red colander. This is attached to a long hose uh, into the kitchen sink, which we're going to pump in at about 24 degrees Celsius, which I think is about 72 Fahrenheit. And the filter has already got mature media in. So this has actually been running in my home gallery. Um, so this has only actually been detached from, you know, oxygenated water for a few hours so I'm hopeful by the time we've got the tank filled it all running that is going to be a seeded filter ready to add some livestock relatively soon obviously testing for ammonia and nitrite before we add any livestock there is a risk that we'll get some ammonia leaching from the tropical soil the mature filter should help deal with that also uh, Will is going to be doing 50% water changes at least 50% water changes every day for the first week, every other day for the second week, every third day for the third week, and every uh, and then after four weeks, it's one 50% water change once a week. This helps to deal with the algae. Uh, it helps to, for the plants to establish themselves so they're in a position to fight off the algae. The water changes just really help disrupt any kind of potential algae growth, which is really common in the, the new stages of an aquascape's life. So I'm going to break for lunch now. We're going to fill up with water and we're going to do another time lapse of that, of course. The final touches as we fill up the rest of the aquarium. Will's just netting off any floating debris. We've done a minor water change, just a small water change whilst it was filling because we had a bit of cloudy water from the soil. We had a few uprooted stem plants and a few uprooted carpeting plants, so they've all gone back in. But the process of putting them in and out, it does, it does cause some cloudiness. So. It isn't gin clear right now, but it's got a mature filter on there, like I said earlier, so it shouldn't take long to get really, really clear water. So I'm just going to open these curtains and we can see inside this cabinet a bit better. We're running the Oase Biomaster 600 in here, the Thermo, which has got the built-in heater. The pre-filter in here, this is a game changer. Clean this every week, only takes a couple of minutes. Prevents any major debris from getting in the insides here. So this actually doesn't need taken apart and cleaning for months and months. We are going to be fitting inline CO2 eventually. Uh, shout out to CO2 Art. They've sent me a CO2 Art kind of care package, regulator, CO2 drop checker, etc. I think they're sending me their, their elite uh, version. So um, unfortunately, it didn't arrive in time. So it's going to come to my place tomorrow and I'm going to send it to Will so he can fit that. He is a bit nervous about fitting CO2, but I have given him some tips and there's a couple of tutorial videos that I've actually created as well. So um, I'm sure he won't have any problems. Um, most of the plants are the Tropica 1, 2 grow. So they are, quite un uh, they are quite demanding in terms of they need some nutrients in their early life. So we do need to dose liquid fertilizers from the start. In this case, we're going to be dosing just the one pump a day for the first week, two pumps for the second week, and then after four weeks, we go up to five pumps every day in here in this particular system. So let's just do an overall kind of rundown of the scape, how we created it, and yeah, I'm just really pleasantly surprised at how well it came together. The hardscape only took me, how long did it take me? That's 15 minutes. Um, but you know great great materials when you've got great materials to use it's relatively straightforward to create a good aquascape if you have an idea of what you want to create so shout out to aquarium gardens for providing this beautiful green jade stone tropical aquarium plants for all the beautiful plants here we've gone over the species already so no need to go through them all again um, 
Filtration we've talked about, lighting, Twinstar 900S version 3, the latest version, 84 watts. That's going to be on for eight hours a day. Now I have told Will to start off on 50% and then gradually work up to 100% uh, over the four week period. So you might have, might have noticed this kind of first four week period of an aquascape's life is really, really important to prevent algae. So we're doing the large frequent water changes. We're careful with our dosing of liquid fertilizer. We're planting really heavily with a good proportion of fast growing stem plants like we've got here with the Rotalas. We're planting heavily with really healthy plants from Tropica. Uh, we're dosing a good quality liquid fertilizer. We've got a good quality substrate here with the Tropica Aquarium soil. Good lighting, good filtration, good circulation. You know, Will's gonna be doing good maintenance, aren't you, Will? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm really excited to see how this one's going to develop. And, uh, you know, Will's only a 90 minute drive from me, so uh, hopefully in a, in a good few weeks time, I can come and do an update video for you guys. More importantly, Will hopefully is going to do well in his project on aquascaping. Um, and I'm excited to hear what his results going to be. There we go. My first real attempt at a Brazilian kind of style irigumi. It is, I can't really call it Brazilian style. It doesn't really do it justice. It has got, you know, the twisty path, you know, obviously Iwagumi style stem plants in the back. You know, that's where the similarities are, um, but it's not quite got the kind of complexities I, I would suggest at the moment of, of a full Brazilian style. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Do you like this style of aquascape? And what fish should we put in here? Okay, guys, I'm gonna say cheerio. Thanks to Will for inviting me into his beautiful Thank home. You. Thank you very much, George. You're welcome. I uh, hope you enjoy the aquascape and no pressure, keeping it well maintained. We'll do an update hopefully in four weeks or five weeks time. So keep it, keep it going, keep up those water changes. Uh, thanks for watching guys, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. You take care, keep on scaping. Cheerio.